Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 74 for Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015. Video editing. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash arena to apply for a loan right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. What exactly is video editing for mobile? When I think of video editing, I can't help but think of it from the perspective of a professional video editor, because that's what we do around here, sitting behind a pair of big screens, working a timeline until each shot is just right. But mobile is all about the small screen. And if there's one thing no one wants, it's spending time working the minute details of a video edit on a tiny screen. Every tool has its time and place, and mobile isn't where you want to really need to do that kind of video editing. What most people want is a simple, easy to use way to take the video that they've shot on their device and turn it into something enjoyable. Maybe add some music, throw in some effects, some transitions, export it out and call it a day. I covered apps similar to what I'm explaining here on episode 41 of this show, though the theme then was what I called photo and video collage, kind of hearkening to uh, Google's Auto Awesome feature, trying to find apps that fit that profile. Today's apps promise to be more than just that, though after looking at them closely, in some ways it's hard to tell how different they really are. Regardless, if what you want to do is basic on-device video editing for whatever purpose, I've got you covered in this week's Roundup. Let's start off with something super simple. Sometimes all you need is a way to drop your clips in, set a few in and out points, reorder the clips, maybe add some music, and then, you know, export the file. And what do you know, WeVideo does this perfectly. This is not for the video purist who would scoff at the pre-made themes included here. I'm gonna show you what this is all about. First of all, the app is nicely redesigned. It has material design touches throughout. I'll go ahead and tap the floating action button to kick off a new project. Here I can pick from media stored on my device, or I can go into the cloud, and that's uh, connected to my Google Drive account. I'll tap to select the media for my project, and then when I'm done with that, I'll tap the check mark button. And now my clips are sorted vertically with the running time for each clip set to the side. I can tap and hold and then drag any of these around to change up the order. And I can also tap into a clip. And that's to drag the in and out points to you know, set the clip at any length I want, making the clip shorter or longer as needed. There's mute control at the bottom. There's a preview button here for previewing the clip, and this button pulls a caption for the clip if extra context is needed. Okay, so I've determined the basics here. Now, let's tap this button to check out some themes. A small collection of themes are actually included here for free. Things like Game Over, which has kind of a video game feel, obviously, uh, or 1960 for that aged Polaroid look but plenty more themes are there for paying customers as well. And these themes do a lot from filters to music to different types of transitions. It's like the point and shoot for video editing timelines. I can record a voiceover if I need to, that'll be played over the top of my video, and then I can save when I'm finished. Now for free, my saved video has a watermark attached, a premium purchase, actually runs $4.99 for the year's worth of access and removes that. Find Video Editor by WeVideo right now in the Play Store. Now let's tackle some timeline video editing, which can get complicated on a small screen. But in the case of PowerDirector by Cyberlink, it's timeline video editing, though simplified. Once I kick off a new project, I get the timeline view below 
and the media is set up there up at the top. Up there, I have access to my on-device media as well as my cloud media on my Google Drive account. I can also select music to play underneath the video. I'm given one video track to work with, which like we video basically means I can't use the audio from one video to play underneath other video clips. Essentially, it's a linear timeline start to finish with only one video clip playing at any time. Though I can add other tracks for layering things like images, static images that is, and text on top of the video playing underneath. Those can, of course, be resized to fit the screen however I wish. Any clip on the timeline can be tapped for more actions. I can split the video at the playhead point or tap the edit button to do things like setting the volume and audio fade options for that clip. There are playback speed alteration options. You can flip and rotate the image that's on the screen and cropping the image to focus on something specifically. Between clips, I can tap on these transition buttons to select how one clip moves to the next. And those range from useful to, well, you know, cheesy. But they are all guilty of this, all of the apps in today's roundup, so I'm not faulting PowerDirector for that. Once you have your masterpiece, you tap the top right button to save the project file. Or you can produce a video file that you can watch anywhere that you like. Now, the free version of PowerDirector will display a watermark on your output file, but paying a one-time fee of $4.95 removes that watermark, as well as upgrading your export video quality to full HD resolution. PowerDirector by Cyberlink can be found in the Play Store right now. So you say you want to enter the world of timeline video editing on your puny little screen. All right, you asked for it. KineMaster is a fully featured video editor that is packing so many little details, you're going to be stumbling over them even days after you first start using the app. Let's fire off a new project here to start with. Tapping Get Started brings you to your media selection process. You'll name the project, of course, and then you can browse through your media library to pick the clips and images to use. You're also given access to cloud storage. Here I can access all of my Google files stored in my Google Drive account. Now, once I've picked my media to start with, I can choose either to apply a theme, which paints my media in a prefabricated way, good for, you know, cheesy looking birthday montages, for example, or basic, which is how I create my own look and feel. I can add text to the beginning, to the middle, and the end of the video. And I'll add a music cut from the device. Now, given that these clips are pulled from the cloud, sometimes it'll take a few minutes for KineMaster to load them onto the timeline. And you'll see that progress as it's being done. If it's local media, that actually happens immediately. And now you can see all my clips laid out horizontally with the music track underneath, complete with a waveform view, which is really nice for timing shots. If I want to add more layers for compositing images, I can tap this Layers button and then select Accordingly. This does include adding video layers, though that feature does require purchase of a 30-day use pass or a monthly subscription for the year or for the month, which also includes video cropping and watermark removal. But even for free, I can do things like reorder my clips, trim and split them for shorter clips, add a bunch of cheesy effects, of course, tweak the transitions between clips for better or, I don't know, for worse. I can tap a clip and determine how much the background music should duck under when that particular clip is playing back. KineMaster really is about as fully featured a video editor for Android as I've seen, but as I mentioned earlier, the best features do come at a price, and it isn't cheap. A 30-day pass costs $5.99, while a yearly subscription runs $39.99. It's an impressive suite, no doubt about it, but the cost will be enough to turn casual users away. Check it out and see what you think. Find KineMaster in the Play Store right now. Now, I know the very last clip you saw there, it was all jittery. My initial time with these apps was spent on my Nexus 6P, a device that was released a few months ago. Things moved very smoothly. The footage on this episode that you just saw was recorded on my Nexus 5, a now more than two-year-old device. I use it because it has HDMI out through the micro USB port. 
thanks to SlimPort, and that's something that none of the new Nexus devices have anymore, sadly. So if any of that footage, like that last shot, looked a bit laggy or slow, that's why. It turns out editing video can be a processor-intensive process. So if you have an older device, you should expect that kind of performance with all of those fancy transitions, uh, graphics, and layers. And things are just going to kind of be a bit stuttery as a result. But if you can survive that during the edit, the final export should be glitch-free. And that, I suppose, is the most important part. Don't expect this show to be edited on a mobile device anytime soon. There just is no substitute for the real deal. Right, Josh? All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor, of today's episode. And uh, that is prosper.com. In today's economy, cash really is king. So instead of getting stuck with high rate uh, interest rate credit cards, all you have to do is go to prosper.com. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest and they're investing in you. It's like the Uber or the Airbnb for borrowing money. You can use Prosper to borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days. With Prosper.com, you can borrow money for just about anything you want. You can pay off high-rate credit cards, you can fix up your house, plan a vacation, anything you want. It's your money. Heck, I could use Prosper to pay for the new clutch that has to go into my car. Unexpected things like that are perfect for Prosper. Prosper.com is the better way to get the cash you need at a low interest rate. To check your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit, go to prosper.com slash arena for up to $35,000 in your account in as few as five days. Just go to prosper.com slash arena and check it out for yourself. That's prosper.com slash arena. And we thank them for their support. All right, up next, an app released by Adobe that bridges the gap between its desktop video editing suite and your mobile device. Let's take a look. Adobe may be doing everything it can to get rid of Flash without, well, saying anything specific about how they're trying to get rid of it. But one thing they aren't trying to sweep under the rug is their video editing software, Adobe Premiere. We use it here at Twit to edit our shows and publish out to your eyes and your ears. It's quality stuff. Well, Adobe finally released a mobile version of its editing software for Android, and it's called Adobe Premiere Clip. Now, don't expect a fully featured timeline editor here. This is specifically meant for the small mobile screen. The landing page is My Projects. And as you can see, you can tap the floating action button down at the bottom to create a new project and get started. A few options will pop up there. The top one takes you to your on-device gallery of media. The LR button imports from your synced Adobe Lightroom collections, if you have any. I do not. Creative Cloud for importing from your Creative Cloud account or your previous projects done here. And finally, this camera button for capturing a photo or video for your project straight from your camera. I'll select some media for my device and pick from two options here that you're given, automatic or freeform. Let's do automatic, which is how you let Adobe Premiere Clip take charge of your video. Your clips can be sorted in any order that you choose and you'll wanna pick a tune for your video. Now this button right here lets you set the pace for the cuts between clips so you can slow things down or maybe speed them up if you want the overall pace of your project uh, to change speed. Now if you want more control, you can switch over to Freeform. Here you can do things like trimming your clips, you can adjust the look of each clip with exposure, highlight, and shadow sliders. There's also some useful audio settings for fades, of course, and smart volume, which acts as a leveler for your audio as it attempts to keep the level consistent between your clips. And as for the project itself, you can turn on the sync to music feature, which attempts to cut the video to the tempo of your music that you've selected. There are also filters for your clips here, and don't forget to go into the project settings and turn on crossfade between clips so the transition isn't so jarring. Finally, publish it out to a video file, Creative Cloud, maybe YouTube directly, or you can even send the project to your desktop Adobe Premiere Pro environment for further attention. Adobe Premiere Clip is slick, it's worth checking out, but it does require a free Adobe account to get started. Find Adobe Premiere Pro in the Play Store for free right now. 
I love that you can uh, share projects between your device and your Premiere Pro edit suite. I don't know how many people are going to start a serious edit project on their phone and then move it over to their Premiere uh, on their desktop. You can start a project on the go, though, and that's cool. Then you can fit and finish it on a larger screen. That's all thanks to Adobe's creative cloud syncing. That's something that none of the other apps in today's show are capable of. That's a big differentiator. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. I just went through the inbox uh, earlier today to kind of throw your suggestions into the doc, and I have a bunch of new show ideas as a result. So it's super helpful to me. Arena at twit.tv is the email address for that. Uh, you can also go to our subreddit, androidapparena.reddit.com, and pitch in those ideas there along with other fans of the show. It really helps me out. Uh, the show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific. It's following Tech News Tonight. Find it at twit.tv slash live for the live taping. If you can't make that live taping, the show will appear later in the evening in the feed and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.